Guys, so I'm taking a little longer with this video than I wanted to because I keep chugging down my iced, uh, my latte here. It is freaking hot in my house. It's like 85, 86 degrees in here. We are broiling and we're finally going to get our AC fixed on Wednesday. So next time you see me, you'll probably see me wearing a sweater because it's too damn cold. But it's okay because I'd rather be too damn cold than too damn hot. It is hot, right David? Yeah, it is really, really hot. When I go to bed, it's really hot. It's hot, guys. So I'm sorry. That's why my melt, my makeup is melting right now. So I'm sorry. All right. Top of 3183. Nora and Becker look back to the wet field. Nobody's fault. Everybody's fault. Near the center of the field, First Lieutenant Jimmy Cross squatted in the muck, almost entirely submerged. His, in his head, he was revising the letter to Kiowa's father. Impersonal this time. An officer expressing an officer's condolences. No apologies were necessary because, in fact, it was one of those freak things. And the war was full of freaks. And nothing could ever change it anyway. Which was the truth. The exact truth. Lieutenant Cross went deeper into the muck. The dark water at his throat. And he tried to tell himself it was the truth. Beside him, a few steps to the left, the young soldier was still searching for his girlfriend's pictures, still remembering how he had killed Kiowa. Okay. When a man died, there had to be blame. Jimmy Cross understood this. You could blame the war. You could blame the idiots who made the war. You could blame Kiowa for going to it. You could blame the rain. You could blame the river. You could blame the field, the mud, the climate. You could blame the enemy. You could blame the mortar rounds. You could blame people who were too lazy to read a newspaper, who were bored by the daily body counts, who switched the channels at the mention of politics. You could blame whole nations. You could blame God. You could blame the munitions makers or Karl Marx or a trick of fate or an old man in Omaha who forgot to vote. In the field, though, the causes were immediate. A moment of carelessness or bad judgment or plain stupidity carried consequences that lasted forever. And that last line, I love this line because, yes, it could be, um, it, it is, of course, relevant to the field, right? But this is also relevant, I argue, in everyday life, right? A moment of carelessness or bad judgment or just plain stupidity carries consequences that last forever and I want you all to remember this and to keep this line and this line and this line in mind as you go on to your life okay guys because let me tell you girls and guys one moment okay in your life of carelessness or bad judgment or just plain stupidity okay one action okay will carry the consequences forever okay, and this isn't just in battlefield y'all this is in everyday life trust grandma here okay for a long for a long while, Jimmy Cross lay floating. In the clouds to the east were the sounds of a helicopter, but he did not take notice. With his eyes still closed, bobbing in the field, he let himself slip away. He was back home in New Jersey, a golden afternoon on the golf course, the fairways lush and green, and he was teeing it up on the first hole. It was a world without responsibility. When the war was over, he thought, maybe then he would write a letter to Kiowa's father or maybe not maybe he would just take a couple of practice swings and knock the ball down the middle and pick up his clubs and walk off into the afternoon okay and that was that would be the end of it okay and all of them were in their own little world but at least Kiowa was going home okay and like I said brotherhood true love right this is it if they're able to drag him out of the muck then he would be able to do anything for him okay and O'Brien writes these very realistic stories and he's like this is it this is reality this is war it's not these little romantic little short stories or novels or videos that they see you no know, this is right here okay this is reality what dispatch has told us Okay, reporter on the ground, what O'Brien says, soldiers on the ground, okay, and if we go on to prisoners, this one is a little, um, this one, um, is a little controversial, let me tell you all why, okay, the author of this one, uh, Yusuf, and I'm probably going to destroy his name, Yusuf, uh, Komon Komonyaka, Komonyaka, he served for Vietnam from 65 to 68, so he was an information specialist okay he won the bronze star but he was in vietnam and this is um this is an interesting poem and i chose it for a very good reason because it's called prisoners and when i mentioned vietnam and prisoner what's the first thing that comes to your head okay, prisoner of war pow someone who's mia okay, you'll see right now um bumper stickers right and and 
caps that bear you know POW or MIA people start talking about that right so if you're looking at prisoners by this poet who by the way won the Nobel Prize in 1994 won the Pulitzer Prize I'm sorry he won the Pulitzer Prize in 1994 for poetry okay so his poetry is very well known if I'm going to tell you okay we're going to read a poem entitled Prisoners and it's set in Vietnam Prisoners of War the United States right it's not okay it's not usually 3208. Usually at the helipad, I see them stumble dance across the hot asphalt with Kroger stacks over their heads, moving toward the interrogation huts, thin framed as box kites of sticks and black silk, anticipating a hard wind that'll tug and snatch them into them into space. Snatch them out into space. I think some must be laughing under their dust-colored hoods, knowing rockets were aimed at Chile, that the water's evaporating and soon the nail will make contract with metal. How could anyone love these half-broken figures bent under sky brightness? The weight they carry is the soil we tread night and day. Who can cry for them? I've heard the old ones are the hardest to break. An arm twist, a combat boot against the skull, a 45 jab them to the, into the mouth, nothing works. When they start talking with ancestors faint as camphor smoke and pagodas, you know you'll have to kill them to get an answer. Sunlight throws skies against the afternoon. Everything's a heat mirage. A river tugs at their slow feet. I stand alone and amazed with a pill-happy door gunner signaling me to board the Cobra. I remember how one day I almost bowed to such figures walking toward me under a corporal's ironclad stare. I can't say why. From a half a mile away, entries huddle together and the prisoners look like marionettes hooked to strings of light. Okay. And the thing with the war... And, I've, and I've, we've discussed this in World War I, is I never want you all to think as war is black and white. Okay, it's shades of gray. And right here, he isn't talking about American POWs. He's talking about POWs from the Viet Cong. Okay, and what would happen to them. Okay, and I hope that this reminded you of um, the Hollow Men in World War I. And those of you all who have me in British literature, remember World War I poetry, okay? Um, I like this, and I wanted you all to read this because to understand that the the soldiers um they not only just talked about the experiences that they had they also talked about the experiences of the enemy right of the Viet Cong um and right here it's the prisoners from the Viet Cong and we never really think about that we're thinking prisoners U.S. no it's the Viet Cong okay and if you look right here um let's look at stand at line five six seven eight nine ten Line 10, I think some must be laughing under their dust-colored hoods, knowing that rockets are aimed at Chile, okay, and that the water's evaporating, and soon the metal will be, the nail will come in contact with metal, okay, so what do you all get from this, okay, that, that he's thinking that some of these prisoners are like, okay, yeah, you can take me, but guess what, your, uh, your contact down there at Chile, where the U.S. is, um, having an amphibious operation, yeah, that water's going to boil because we're sending something at it, all right? Um, so he's thinking that, and I think that's such an amazing thought of saying, who is the prisoner then? Okay, is it the person under the hood who's laughing because they're about to throw, um, to throw some sort of rocket at a U.S. amphibious operation? So you see how the rules reverse here? Okay, how can anyone love these half-broken figures bent under this, this, the bright the sky's brightness the weight they carry is the soil we tread day and night who can cry for them okay i love these lines right here because who can love these half broken figures what does um t.s Eliot talk about in the hollow men okay that they're also like marionettes that they're half broken all right i love this line i love this poem because it takes the suffering that yes american pow's were suffering at the time turns it over and says Okay, the, pres the Viet Cong prisoners are going almost through similar, right? Um, and it talks about how they break them, right, with an arm twist, the combat boot against the skull, the 45 in the mouth, okay? But nothing is working because some of these soldiers don't care. Yeah, they're willing to die for their, um, or for their cause. Okay, um, 
go to, let's look at line 35. Everything's a heat mirage. A river tucks at their slow feet. I stand alone and amazed with the happy pit, with the pill happy. Remember what um, Michael Hare told us about the pill poppers? Gun, door gunner signaling me to board the cobra. Okay. Look at right here. I want you all to see what this means right here. I remember one day I almost bowed to these figures walking toward me under a cor corporal's ironclad stare. Okay, and he says, I can't say why. Okay, why do you think this soldier would just get this feeling to, to bow to these prisoners of war? Why is that? He says that he can't. He can't say why, and then he continues on. From a half mile away, trees huddle together, and the prisoners look like marionettes hooked to strings of light. Okay, again, this beautiful imagery um, making reference to what we learned about in the Hollow Men. But why do you all feel that he almost bowed to them? That sounds very weird, right? Very paradoxical. How do you bow to a group of men that um, come in as prisoners of war or a group of men that are actively fighting you, okay? That the enemy, as we would call it, right? Why would you bow to the enemy? What feeling is there? Is there maybe a feel of comrade camaraderie? sort of a feel as, hey, you guys are stuck in this war too, and we don't quite know what this war is about. Um, remember, we talked about that in World War One, right? That war, there are causes to the war, but honestly, can anybody really tell me what, was, what they were fighting for? Vietnam, uh, proxy war, okay, why were these all these young men out there? Okay, so this is something to think about. And I hope, like I said, we only have a day for Vietnam, you guys. I wish we could talk more. I wish I could get my mom's ex to talk to me about it. Um, but this was a this was a difficult war, and like I said, it's something. This is a war that, you know, that just keeps coming back and, and haunting us, and I think it will continue to haunt us. If you're ever in D.C., go to the Vietnam Memorial, um, and I think it travels around. I think they, they travel around, and you have a lot of um, or not charities um, taking up collections to help Vietnam veterans who came back from the war. In Incredibly, incredibly um, ill, not just mental, right? Not just physically, but also mentally as well. Um, so I hope that this helps sort of understand it. Um, there is a lot more in here you can read if you'd like. And if you all want to chat about this, of course, you can always text me. Um, your discussion will be up by Monday afternoon. Okay, so go ahead and um, get that done. For next time, like I said, we're reading the Holocaust, so it's not going to get any happier. Um, I don't know what's going on over there, so I need to go check. Um, so anyway, I hope you all learned from this. Um, I'll talk to you guys about the Holocaust later, okay? Have a great night, and remember, wear your masks, okay? Bye.